Hare Krishna. I'd like to give a shout out to Yane Robinson, who's going through some serious problems. Bright light, bright light. Bright light in my eyes right now. Um, welcome to my next line of bright light videos. I want to give a shout out to Yane Robinson, first of all, because she's going through some issues with her eyes. The eyes are very important, so she told me that whatever YouTube video I make, make sure I speak about the importance of giving thanks for things that are seen and unseen. Speaking of seen and unseen, I spoke to my friend Narsim Hadev recently, and he told me I should make a video about karma because I made some interesting points in the conversation. I was telling him that, all right, sometimes you see a person who's very prosperous in this life. Like, let's, I always use Jay-Z as, as, as an example. Jay-Z is very prosperous. I have no idea what he's done in his past lives to deserve such prosperity. But as it is, he's prosperous. And Krishna can make arrangements for his servants. It doesn't matter if you're his devotee or his non-devotee. He treats everyone fairly. So I could have done so many good deeds, so much pious activities in my previous existence. Or I could be coming from a higher abode, let's say Brahma Jyoti. And Brahma Jyoti is still a fallen state. It's not the spiritual world. So I'm coming from these higher realms of physical existence and I'm still carrying some of these good karmas with me. So as a result, in this life now, I'm receiving the enjoyment, I'm receiving the payment, I'm receiving the reward for things that I've done in my past lives. Likewise, some people are born in this life, no hands, no arms, no legs, and you wonder, well, what the hell did this little baby do to deserve such punishment? To be born without a heart, or to be born with half a brain? A lot of times, those things are things that are stemming from previous existences. So karma itself is a mystery, but karma in itself is also self-explanatory. Karma is not a good thing, no matter if you did good deeds or if you did bad deeds. The reason why karma is no good is because you usually have to take birth again to receive the rewards for things you've done in previous existences. Whereas a movement like Hare Krishna is very rare because Hare Krishna basically studies the art of destroying all karma. So we want to burn up our karma so that at the end of this particular life, because you have no karma, there's no reason to continue on your journey in the material world. You want to burn off generally your karma and your material desires. It's not about burning off all your desires. There are desires that are firmly rooted in the spiritual world, but all those desires have to pretty much do with service to Krishna. In service to Krishna, there is enjoyment. There is maximum enjoyment, not temporary minimum enjoyment. So when we do good deeds, when we live in the mode of goodness, all we're doing is continuing a situation where I'll have to take rebirth to receive the fruits of my reward. But when we do things in an akarmic fashion or without karma, that's when we offer the results of all of our rewards to Krishna. And what happens is that everything that we do then is transcendentalized. So I just like to say, study the Hare Krishna doctrine because they're the only ones and I'm gonna tell you something about all of these people that's taking on disciples right now it's very popular for people to take on disciples but Srila Prabhupada said you should never be in a rush to take on many disciples that it's actually a dangerous business you see when people take on disciples or say this is my student or I'm initiating them you gotta understand now you're now responsible for their karmic debt and we're not just talking about the karma from this life. We're talking about the karma for potentially, potentially millions and millions, if not trillions of previous lifetimes. That's why you see some spiritual masters, they look so worn out and raggedy. It's because they're taking on the energy of their disciples. Whereas people who come into this path and they don't take no disciples at all, they'll look young and fresh way into their 80s 
That's because they're not taking on the karmic debt of any other souls. So be careful with this guru business. You know, a lot of people do it for name, fame, adoration. They want to have a nice retirement package. They don't want to die struggling and all of that. So they initiate people. And then next thing you know, you got all of these tons like a mountain of karma. But you're not even sufficiently purified to burn off your own karma, much less burn off other people's karma. So guru business is not a business for just any and everybody. That's for empowered, enhanced, advanced souls. Do not become a parent unless you can deliver your child from death. Do not become a guru unless you can deliver a person to Krishna or deliver Krishna to a person. This is just basic, sound philosophical things that need to be discussed so first of all i like to say be thankful for the blessings you got both seen and unseen not everything in your life that looks like a curse is a curse sometimes it's a blessing in disguise and as far as karma we have to understand people also want to know well why is there so much suffering in the world because there are threefold miseries that you sign up for when you come into this material life. The threefold miseries are Adi Daivik, Adi Bautik, and Adhyatmatik. Okay? The Adhyatmatik or the, the suffering caused by the self or the Atma is sufferings that originate with this gross material body, whether it's sickness or it's a form of desire that can't be immediately fulfilled. These are all sufferings, anger, hunger, thirst, tiredness, things like this. I got to use the bathroom, but I'm on the subway, so there's no way to use the bathroom. Now my bladder is full. I am suffering. So these are sufferings that are coming from the material body. You have sufferings caused from the mind. That's also still adhyatmatic. That's coming from this body. Your mind. Oh, is my girlfriend cheating on me? Oh, is my boyfriend gambling all of the rent money away? Oh, um, did he feed the babies? Um, will I still have a job? Um, I think I'm mentally ill. Um, I think I'm a pervert and, and, and I don't have no way to express that. So it's a million sufferings that come from the mind, from doubts, from fears, from what we call anahartas or knots that are tied up in your heart for many lifetimes. So these are adhyatmatic. Then you have adibotic. Adibotic comes from fools, other living entities who infringe upon your right to justice, a nice life, and the pursuit of happiness. So that's like your government taxing you too much. Um, That's like your boss requiring you to work more hours than you're supposed to work and he still wants to give you your regular rate of pay. That's like your ex-girlfriend who's um going around on the internet spreading bad words about you when it's not true. Or on and on and on. If you're afraid of water bugs, it might be a big cockroach crawling in your air when you're sleeping. You know, stuff like that. Suffering caused by other living entities. And then you have Adidaivik. Adi David is very interesting. That's suffering caused by either supernatural forces or the forces of forces of nature, which is in actuality the same thing. Also, demigods and demons can also cause this um, form of suffering called Adi David. So the threefold miseries is something you sign up for when you come to the material world, because the material world is no place for a gentleman. If you're sane, you would not be here. In the material world, only 10% of the living entities have chosen the material life. The other 90% are still enjoying in their original capacity as part and parcel of Shri Krishna. The Hare Krishna movement specializes in many things, particularly the main goal is Prem or love of God, divine love. But even on lower levels, we have the keys to end all material suffering. This is called mukti. 
or liberation. So, of course, as I always do in my videos, I implore you to study the teachings of Krishna consciousness. It is a sure shot solution. Also, I want to give a shout out to all of the people in Ferguson who are doing their thing, who are standing up. I want to give a shout out to all of the people who stand up against injustice. This is not a racial issue. It goes way beyond the scope of race. If, if, if it's a racial issue, it's the human race against the Rakshasha race, the aliens. All right? The aliens who look like they're fleshful people. These are the same Illuminati who allegedly killed Srila Prabhupada and poisoned him because all of his teachings were the antithesis of Illuminati. What does Illuminati want you to do? They want you to compete with the Joneses. They want you to say, well, I live just as comfortable as my neighbors. I dress as comfortable as my neighbors. I have just as much sex as my neighbors. I could smoke as much weed as my neighbors and drink enough liquor. I could gamble just as much as my neighbors. I could eat as much meat as my neighbors. So the whole science of the Illuminati is consumerism. Consume, 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 consume without limits. Because they don't want you to reach the state of spiritual reality they want you to continue your material existence so that in one way or another you will be subject to their rules and their rulership don't think that the illuminati is just on the planet earth the rakshashas is all over you know what i'm saying they've infiltrated many solar systems and many galaxies as a matter of fact in the age of satya yuga it is said that the demon lives on other planets and then in the age of Treta Yuga, the demon lived in the same planet as you. Then in the age of Dwapara Yuga, the demon lived in the same country and in the same family. And now in the age of Kali Yuga, guess where the demon lives? In you. And this is why the Harinam Sankirtan Yagna, or the sacrifice, of the glorification, the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord is so necessary in this age. Because if I were empowered today, Krishna said, yo, Caprice, you got to kill all the demons on the planet Earth. I'd be like, but Krishna, where do I start with myself? Because we all got demonic intrusions inside of us, demonic infiltration. That's the age of Kali Yuga. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Prabhu Nityananda decided if we kill one demon, we're going to have to exterminate the entire population of the planet Earth. So it's not about killing the demons in this age. This is the only age where the devil can be transformed. So we want to transform them by way of prasadam or food that's been offered to the Lord. And we most importantly want to transform them with the books, which is the biggest mirdanga or the biggest drum of this age. And we want to transform them with the Hari Nam Sankirtan where we're out there chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So once again, everybody be grateful for what you have. And one last thought. Facebook algorithm is messed up. Y'all got me getting all of these friend requests from India, 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 India. There's 600 other continents. Like, I need some friend requests from Europe, Africa, South America, Asia. I'm dying for some Chinese friends on my Facebook list. Where's all of these friend requests? I don't get no friend requests from no other continents. Just the subcontinent of Asia. Yes, yeah, sure. There's a lot of Bhagavad Gita on my page. There's a lot of Vedic information. But I think that this, 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 this Facebook algorithm has me set up, like, to just... Get friend requests from India. Where's all of the other? Where's the Aborigines? Where's all of the people of the planet Earth? Send me friend requests. I want, listen, my whole goal is to see that Srila Prabhupada receives two things. He receives that moon that he was looking for. He said, what's the sense of having all the stars in the sky? What's the sense of having a million disciples when I could just make one pure disciple? So I want to deliver him his moon. And I want to be alive to see the crossover when at least 10% of the population of the planet Earth is engaged in Krishna consciousness and we transform this planet into a paradise Earth. Jehovah Witnesses, you with me? Holla at your boy.
हरे कृष्णा